Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial where I'll be introducing my NRF24 library. Let's get started. First, we should create a project in STM32Cube IDE. I will select STM32F103C8T6MCU because I am using the Blue Pill development board. Let's wait until it is created. Now let's configure IOC file. We must enable SPI interface to communicate with NRF24 module and we should select full duplex master mode. As you see, SPI speed is 4 megabit per second, which is enough for communicate with NRF24, but let's set 8 megabit per second, the maximum speed which can be used with NRF24 module. Also, we should enable SPI global interrupt in NVIC settings. Now set CE and CSN output pins, which in my case is PA4 and PA3. Also, I am setting one pin for NRF24 IRQ. Then configure selected pins. Select falling edge for selected IRQ pin because NRF24 will set this pin low when interrupt occurs. Set CE and CSN pins output speed high, and if you want, add some labels on pins. Set UART in asynchronous mode for print information from MCU and debug. Enable all necessary global interrupt in NVIC configurations, in this case URT, EXTI, and SPI. Review parameters. Configurations are done. Now save IOC file and generate code. This is GitHub repository of my NRF24 library, where there is also all the necessary information. I will leave a link below the video. Now we should copy link and clone NRF24 library. Open terminal, type git clone, paste copied link, and press enter. Next, we should create a folder in STM32Cube IDE Project's Drivers folder and then copy all necessary files into it. Refresh the project to apply the changes. After this, add the directory to the compiler's include path as shown in the video. Click Apply and Rebuild Index. I selected to generate hex and bin files because I am using the STM32 programmer separately. Then include nrf24.h and nrf24regaddresses.h in main.c file.
also include strings.h. Define the payload size as 32 bytes. Define TX without any value to easily change between TX and RX code using ifdef, else, and endif preprocessor directives. Create a uint 8T data array for the transmitter with the already defined payload size. Assign a value to the array, for example, the string hello. I am also creating an array for the acknowledgement payload, but I won't be using it in this video. Now create a data array with the same parameters, but without values for the receiver. I am creating the acknowledgement payload array again for Rx, but as I mentioned, I won't be using the acknowledgements payload in this video. Set the CSN pin high and call the initialization function to set everything necessary for the correct start of the program. Set transmitter power. For example, 0 dBm as its maximum power. Set the data rate to 1 megabit per second. Set the channel to 78. Configure the payload size for pipe 0. Configure the CRC, for example, by enabling it and setting it to one byte. Now we should open the radio pipes and set addresses for them. Create a uint 8T array for the address with a size of 5.
Then open the TX pipe with this address. Open RX pipe zero with same address. Call the stop, listen, and listen functions for TX and RX. Now call the transmit function with the TX data array as the first argument and the size of the data as the second. Add a delay of one millisecond or more to avoid noise. For the receiver code, call the listen function, check if data is available, and read the data with the NRF24 receive function. Use a delay of 1 to 5 milliseconds. Next, write code to print the received data on the computer screen via URT. Save and build it as the transmitter code, then upload it to the TX device. After commenting out the defined TX at the beginning of the code, save and build it as the receiver code, and then upload it to the receiver device. Print the received data via UART. I am using Minicom for this. As you can see, the data is printed incorrectly because the data size is not specified correctly. 
we should use the exact length of the string in the HAL UART transmit function, which can be obtained using strlen. Let's build and upload it again. Now it works. Write code to clear the receiver buffer after printing it to detect any communication instabilities. Save, build, and upload again. As you can see, when I switch off the transmitter, the RX device's data buffer is empty. When I switch the transmitter back on, the receiver device's buffer is not empty anymore. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please like and subscribe. Feel free to leave any questions or comments below. See you in the next video.